Welcome back to D20 Tactics. On this channel, I play Dungeons and Dragons with my friends, and we explore combat scenarios and play out the tactics used to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplaying. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Sarson Zero, and today I'm joined by Blind Oracle, Restricted, Dingo, and Azure Wolf. Together, we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons and Dragons. This is the third encounter attacking an orc raiding party, so if you missed the start, you can find a link to it in the description below. Grab your dice, draw your sword, and let's jump into combat. Hit points, abilities, spells, items in hand. Blind Oracle. 46 hit points total, short bow in hand. Asia Wolf. 49 hit points total. And I have three first level slots remaining, two second, two thirds, and one fourth. In hand is the Wand of the War Mage in the spell book. Dingo. 61 HP, my magical great axe in hand, and second wind and action surge are back up. Restricted. 39 HP, channel divinity, two out of two. Four level one spell slots, no level two spell slots, two level three spell slots, and one level four spell slot. In hand is my plus one shield. Monsters, abilities, items, and numbers. This encounter has three ogres. Ogres are pretty easy to hit. They don't have a lot of armor, but they have a ton of hit points. They have great clubs to beat you with, javelins to throw at you. Otherwise, they're vulnerable to just about every spell in the game. One of the things about cavalry formation is the mount has to be larger than you are. So ogres being large creatures can't ride on that many things, but one of the things they can ride on are giant elk. Giant elk are huge, so ogres are riding on giant elk. Giant elk have a charge attack, so if they move at least 20 feet straight towards the target and then hit it with a ram attack, then it does an additional damage. If the target is a creature, it can be knocked prone. They also have a hoof attack. Also have two orcs to round out the experience amount. They're aggressive, so they can use a bonus action to move towards you. They have great axes, they have javelins, they have hide armor, and not very many hit points. Terrain and effects. Some difficult terrain. We got the return of the spiked dangerous terrain. If you're pushed into the spiked dangerous terrain, you take 2d6 piercing damage. If you voluntarily move into it, it's just difficult terrain. The fences are five feet tall. You can climb over them without any check. It just consumes movement, unless you're a person who doesn't have to worry about that. That's my terrain. Tactics, what do you guys think for tactics on this one? I think we don't have much of an option. There's not a lot of terrain to really move around, so. Probably put the uh, higher AC targets, like myself and the fighter in the front, and dodge to eat those charge attacks. Yeah. While protecting the squishies behind. From there, probably gonna try and preserve my spell slots. I only have two level three left, so. I'm gonna try and avoid using spells myself and just cantrip. So they can come from the south or the north, right? That's what I'm seeing. Yeah, there's a bridge to the south. So it might be wise to have one of you take one of each area there. One to the north and one to the south. I mean, right now you guys are safe on that bridge there unless they can come around. Would they be able to jump down from that bridge and come up around our uh, backside at all? Yeah, they could maneuver down here. They would then be at this lowered area though. And how low is that lowered area? There are 10 foot tall monsters riding 15 foot tall mooses. So they're definitely going to be able to get up. That one to the west can come across that bridge. That's kind of what I was getting at. Yeah, one left, one front. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, we could probably we just take shelter against the corner of the wall there yep spell wise i think it's more of gotta play it by ear for me might try to give one of you a buff for haze probably the fighter yeah you might be able to get a good fireball off depending on how they group maybe not they're on mounts so they're probably very fast they're probably gonna catch up those real quick we'll probably have one turn if that to position ourselves we can try and get them in a position where we can Use fireball and not hit everyone. Oh, I can sculpt that that's not a problem. What does sculpt do exactly? You can select people that automatically pass the save, and if they pass the save, they take no damage. So we just run in there, and then you shoot me with a fireball. Got it. Again, do one of you want the Wand of Magic Missiles for a little bit of range? I have Sacred Flame as well, so I don't really need that. I don't think there's going to be a lot of range. I think I'm going to get charged immediately. Alrighty. Let's get it started then. Everybody roll initiative. There it is. Oh, hell yeah, brother. No, oh, no. Anybody have higher than a 20? Anybody have between a 20 and a 15? The rogue has a 20. 19 on the owl. 16 ogres. Who's got between a 15 and a 10? Who's got between a 10 and a 5? I have a 6. Fighter has a 5. And I'm missing a wizard. Rocking a massive 3. Blind Oracle, you're up first. Yeah. This is always dangerous. Bonus action to hide behind the fighter. 26. 26, that'll succeed. Move forward two squares. But then you'll lose your hidden... I'm going to take the shot right away. Who are you shooting at? The ogre, straight north. You don't need to move to get that guy. We'll just take that shot then. He can have the cover. He, he doesn't have cover. He's a 10-foot tall ogre riding a 15-foot tall moose. Yeah. Oh, he's huge. That's right. He's a big one. Does a 25 hit the ogre? 25 connects. For 21 points of damage. Uh, okay, a lot of damage. That's statistically average. 
do you still want to move ahead or are you you good where you're at no i'm i'm happy right there after that we go to the owl i think i'm gonna hide him under that western bridge just for the time being after the owl we're gonna go to the ogres the ogres it's all over now <laughs> You were waiting to say that for an hour now. I can't believe I laughed at that. <laughs> we're going to move like so. We're going to wind up a straight line into that spot and hit that there fighter. Here's the ram attack from the giant elk. 18 to hit your fighter. Yes. 17 points of bludgeoning damage. Ow. And take a DC 14 strength save versus prone. 16. That'll succeed. Now the ogre on top is going to attack. It's got a great club. Only has the one attack though. Nine to hit you. No. We're gonna line up charges for these guys, but we're not gonna get much out of them. So we're gonna dash with this elk, and then the ogre's gonna throw a javelin at the cleric. Ogre's gonna get an eight to hit you. That will be a miss. This ogre is gonna do a very similar thing. The elk is gonna dash to there. Then the ogre's gonna throw a javelin at the cleric. How does a 10 sound? That's still a miss. This orc is going to move into cover here and ready an action to throw a javelin if somebody gets within short range. This guy is going to climb down and ready a javelin to throw if somebody gets within short range. After my ogres, I'm going to go to the restricted. He'll pull out his warhammer and take a swing. How does a 22 sound? 22 will connect. That will be three bludgeoning damage. End turn. After the cleric... We're going to go on to the dingo. Move around this ogre to the left. I'm going to drink my potion of growth, and that will give me the enlarged effect for one hour. The orc is going to activate its reaction. He's going to get a nine, which is going to miss. Action surge. And attack ogre to the southeast. It's a ten hit. A ten does not hit their hide armor, no. And for my next attack, does a nat 1 hit? Nat 1 does not hit their hide armor either. It's one of the benefits of hide armor. We're off to a pretty good start, boys. That was the dingo. Wizard. I think you lined them up perfect for me again there for a fireball. I think the best option is to center it right on top of the fighter. Fireball with the shaping seems like the best tech. DC 15 dex. And your damage is going to be 27. Or 13. Orc is going to fail and he cannot survive that. Northwestern Ogre. He's going to roll a 19 and get an 18. So he's going to take 13. The elk that he's riding rolls an 18 total of 21 so that's going to take 13 northeastern ogre is going to take the full 26 27 northeastern elk is going to get a 22 so that's going to take 13 southeastern ogre is going to get a 16 and pass so he's going to take 13 and the southeastern elk is going to get a 17 and pass that's an action anything else no right now i do not even moving isn't worth it i think i'm in a good spot right now so yes done all right blind oracle well, there's not a lot to hide behind here what's the reach on an ogre ogre has a five foot reach smaller than i thought okay giant elk has a 10 foot reach with the ram with the ram okay that is a pit on my right that's a drop okay you want to use me as a high target yeah i think you're the best that unless I can do something silly like try and share a square with the cleric. If you move forward you're at disadvantage to shoot so that would definitely be bad. Take a diagonal step behind the wizard. You'll take an attack of opportunity walking away from the the elk? Because it has a 10 foot reach. You said that was only on the charge. No, it's a ram attack. Okay. Melee weapon attack called ram. Gotcha. I can't do anything either way, so yes, I will take the attack of opportunity. Because if I'm standing there, I'm at disadvantage to take the shot. Because I'm in common misconception. It's not the threat range that invokes disadvantage. It's the five foot proximity that invokes disadvantage. If you're within five feet of an enemy, you have disadvantage on ranged attacks. It has nothing to do with the opponent's reach. Okay. Interesting. You can stay there. Then I don't have advantage on the attack. Yeah, but they got an AC 11. Yeah, I guess I just stand there and hope I don't get whacked next. Or disengage as a bonus action. Yeah, it's six to one half dozen at that point. So sure, stand and take the attack. 14 to hit. 14 connects. And someone's standing in melee. So that solves that. 22 points of damage. Can I call dodge as a bonus action? No. Bonus action disengage. Yep. Head west for as far as my stunty little legs can carry me. After the blind oracle is the owl. He's going to fly out from under the bridge, head towards that southeast ogre to aggravate him for the fighter. Get out of range wherever he can. After the owl is the ogre. Bring it. We're going to move forward and go after the wizard. Giant elk is going to attack with its hooves. Is a 24 going to hit? Yes, it will. 
21 points of bludgeoning damage. The ogre's going to attack with its great club. It's going to get a 19 to hit you. Chilled. You are threatening all of them now. I can get one in here to get the cleric. Come at me. That guy's going to go to there. Elk is going to attack. He's going to get a 16 to hit you. That's going to miss. And the ogre's going to swing a great club. It's going to get a 25 to hit the cleric. And that will be a hit. 13 points of bludgeoning damage. The final pair is going to go after the fighter. We're going to move to here. The elk's going to attack the fighter for a 24, trampling it with its hooves. 23 points of bludgeoning damage to the fighter. Ow. The ogre's going to swing a great club, gets a nat 1. On the orc's turn, the orc is going to throw a javelin at the fighter. 21 to hit the fighter. That'll hit. And that is 5 points of piercing damage. That is all of my guys restricted. Time to use my ultimate form. I will start off by dodging. I will cast at 4th level. Spiritual weapon. 2d8 now. How does a 10 sound? Sounds good for the ogre. That's a, that's a miss. Yeah. Stay where I am and end turn. After that, we go to Dingo. I am going to attack that ogre that he missed. You have advantage on the one to the southeast. First hit. I'm going to attack that one then. 21. 21 will connect. Big damage. 17. Slashing. 17 is lethal. Nice. Which elk is most damaged? I hit him for 21, and he's going to take 9 slash. And I'm going to bonus action, second win for 14. After the dingo is the wizard, Asia Wolf. Seems like this is just a fireball game today, huh? Hell yeah. When in doubt, fireball it out. Every game is a fireball game. Yeah, I got one left. You only have four fireballs. I can arcane recovery a third level slot back. You can get five, but there's six encounters, so it can't be on every encounter. But I think that's the smart move here, because we are kind of taking some major damage from these L. So let's burn them. You're going to drop a fireball that's going to hit everyone here. DC 15 deck save, and your damage is... Oh, 34. Nice. 34 or 17. The southeastern elk is going to take full damage, and that will finish him off. Southwestern ogre is going to pass, and he's going to take 17. Team. Southwestern Elk is going to take full damage. Northeastern Ogre is going to fail. He will drop. Northeastern Elk will fail and he will drop. And that was an action. What else you got? I'm not going to do anything but stand here because moving is going to give an oppie. After that, we go to the Blind Oracle. Bonus action hide? 23. 23 will succeed. Then I'd like to move. Scamp your way up the cliff. Shoot the ogre. 17 to hit. 17 connects. 26 points of damage. And I'm out of movement. I think you have one more square. Hop back down. After the blind oracle is the owl. Move him in, aggravate him for the fighter, the ogre, and get him out. After the owl is the ogre, the elk is going to move. It's going to squeeze over there so that it can go after the wizard. Nat one. That's going to miss. Ogre's going to swing. Ogre's going to get an 11 to hit the wizard. Negative. Orc's going to go after the fighter. Has a bonus action to advance. And he's going to swing his great axe. 16 to hit your fighter. No. Nope. After the ogre is the restricted. First off, I will dodge. So I like having hit points, and then I will let my spiritual weapon do the damage for me. Swinging for the ogre this time. 11. 11 hits. Ooh, I can actually hit something. 14 damage. 14 is lethal. Ooh, nice. And having used action and bonus action, I will end my turn. After the restricted, we go to the dingo. I don't like the way this orc's looking at me, so I'm gonna get choppy. 13 to hit. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what you needed. Big damage. 19 damage. That is lethal. And now for the elk. 18 plus 9. It's 27. Hits. For a massive 10 damage. A massive 10 damage is lethal. Report hit points. 46. 26. 30 HP. 28. Anyone want to do anything, any actions at the end of the encounter? Anybody need some potions? I think this might be a good chance to drink them. I do have two. No, I'll stay where I am. That is a 10. Damn. All right. The adventurer is going to move on, following after the raiding orcs as they make their way back to their lair and try to ensure that the town is safe in the future. Three encounters down, three more to go before the long rest. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope you'll join us next week as the adventure continues. I'm Saracen Zero, and I will see you next time.